Hey guys, Keith here. I um, wanted to spend a little bit of time providing a bit of a primer on tree models um, to give people an understanding of, of how they work, how to configure your tree. Because um, there's a whole bunch of trees that people build out there and, and here are just a sample of them. And understanding how to define it in X lights and then how that translates into how you actually build the tree is kind of important. So let's run through each of the styles, get an idea of, of exactly how it's configured and hopefully it will help you when it comes time to defining your tree in X lights. So the first one here is the default tree. When you draw the tree model, which you, you come up here and you click on this and you click and drag, you get one of these trees. And by default, it's a round tree, which means it's, it's a tree that's in three dimensions. And by default, it's 360 degrees, meaning that it runs all the way um, around to the back. Now, uh, some people like these sorts of trees. Um, they can look quite spectacular. However, if you're using ribbons or you're using um, uh, the strips where you, you punch the pixels through them. Sometimes you can't actually see the pixels at the back and it's a bit of a waste of time um, doing that. And so then you get people that produce trees like this, which is this tree here, except I've changed the degrees to 180. And depending on the viewing angles in the front of your house, you know, you might want a 270 degree tree. Um, one that you can see it starts here at the back and it comes around and it stops here and the back is left unfilled. And this is exactly how I build my pixel trees because you can kind of see it from the side and the front, etc. but you can't see it from the back. So there's really no point filling the tree in with pixels. And because I use uh, James's pixel strip and I punch pixels through it, they effectively hide anything at the back of the tree. So you don't really get that three dimensional look through effect either. So. Um, that's, uh, that's how you would define one of those trees. Now, the other thing to realize is that when you do a 360 degree tree, it is assumed that you will start wiring the tree from the middle of the back and you may come around, uh, uh, around from round to the left and around back to the right, or you might um, go the other way and it'll support either. And that's using this starting location. Because I say bottom left, it's gonna start here at the back in the middle and it's gonna come around, depending on how you look at it. If I'm looking at it from the top down, it's an anti-clockwise direction and all the way around to the back. And it's gonna start at the bottom and go up. If I changed it to bottom right, then it would still start at the same place, except it would come around the tree clockwise and obviously the top left and top right do the same things but they start up at the top. So let's stick it at the bottom left that's by far um, the most common way that people would build a tree although not the only way. The second thing you need to consider is um, the number of strings and strands. So, so let's be really clear here. The number of strings is the number of uh, lengths of pixels that you have. Now, if you join two together, two sets of 100 pixels, that becomes still one string. Um, strings is typically, the way I like to think of strings is this is the number of connections that I am making to my controller. So if I have four connections to my controller, I would show this as a four. And let's imagine that each one of my strings was 200 long and I was going to zigzag up and down the tree four times. I would define it like this. Now you'll see that this actually looks exactly the same as it did before, except in this case, it's been defined with four strings of lights. Each string is 200 long. So I've taken two groups of 100 or four groups of 50 and I've, I've joined them all together. And then I've zigzagged them up and down the tree four times. Um, and then at the end of that, of course, it'll go up once, down twice, up the third time, down the fourth time, and then it will stop. And then another connection from the controller will come in and kick off and I'll go up and down four times. Now, by default, the tree model assumes that, you know, you have four strings here of four zigzags. Um, now, if you've done something really weird, like, I don't know, let's imagine you've got 18 um, ups and downs, but you've got four connections. And so the first four 
are four um, zigzags and the last one is six. Um, you are gonna have trouble trying to represent the tree this way. Now, interestingly, if you look at the node layout of the tree, you can actually see this. You can see how it's zigzagging up and down. You know, string one, node one starts over here and it zigzags up and down to my 200th pixel and then it starts. But what happens if, like I said, instead of being 16 strands, I want an extra two strands at the end. So there'd be one here going up and down. Now the reality is, is you can't actually directly represent that in X lights, but you can get close. So 18 is obviously nine times two. So I could go in and say, actually, I'm going to make this nine string of 100 pixels going up and down twice. And so now if I do the node layout, I've got my 18 strands. Now, the problem is, is this is actually lied because it actually says here that there are nine separate strand connections to my controller and there isn't. Now, Quite frankly, uh, this is going to cause you problems if you're now going to try and upload this to your controller using the integrated XLights upload. That's not going to work. But it is going to send the data to the controller in the right layout and format. And so you'll have to manually configure your controller and tell it that the first connection is actually 200 long and the second one is 200 long, the third is 200 long, the fourth is 600 long. Um, but your controller is not going to care. All the data is still going to be there in the right format. So you will get away from it. Um, but if you can go with a, uh, uh, the number of strings and every string being the same length and your folds, etc., that's a much better way to uh, build your tree and you'll find it will cause you a lot less grief. Now, what happens if you started your tree, you built your tree first and you started at the front? Well, turn it around. Um, there, there's no easy way to, to change this um, if that's not what you've done. Now, if this tree looks a little bit too vertical, you can play with the properties here to change the, the top to bottom ratio. And so you can make it less cone, less come less at the top and so forth. Um, but generally speaking, I at least leave it largely unchanged. Um, the other thing you can do is, and some people do this, is they'll come in and they'll define individual start channels for each of their strings. Generally speaking, I'd recommend against doing this. It's a lot of work. Um, and, and you know, with the right definition of the underlying universes underneath it, there really shouldn't be any need for you to go in and set individual start channels. Um, the only situation where you might want to do that is where you've done something really strange, like, you know, you've got your star handing, hand, uh, hanging off the end of your second strand, and consequently you've got this discontinuity in your, your channels for your tree, and you pretty much in that case have little choice but to define individual start channels. Um, let's move on uh, quickly and because I don't want this video to be too long um, you can definitely come over here and this is the flat tree um, the flat tree is distinguished because um, you know you're going to put it up against a flat wall and you've got it um, uh, you know, flat at the top and flat at the bottom. In practice, I actually think most people who would build a tree like this are probably building one of these, which is a ribbon tree. And here, it does something funky at the top here. And that's just a recognition that with a ribbon tree, you don't cut anything um, and you're not really religious about making sure that everything's in a straight horizontal line. It's more important that those, those uh, strips are... Um, uh, aren't cut and therefore you always end up with this slight triangle at the top or a bow at the bottom and this here has obviously kept it nice and straight at the bottom and a bow at the top. Um, so yeah, uh, look to be honest, either way will work reasonably well. I don't, I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, Finally, you've got your spiral tree. Um, this is a single strand spiral tree. You, you can do double strands. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this is interesting because you know, basically this is assuming you're starting down here in this case, bottom left, and you're going to have one string of 50 pixels spiraling its way up to the top of the tree. Um, the way you do that is obviously you set the number of strings to one. Uh, the stands transfer string stays at one as well. Um, and here I define the number of spiral wraps as four. So normally it's, um, it's set at zero, in which case you just get a straight line. 
but because I'm saying that actually, no, I'm gonna wrap it around the tree four times, you get this spiral. If I was to take this now and make it two strands, um, that doesn't really show very well. So let's increase the number of nodes to 100. You can see that this is actually a double spiral tree. Um, so what's gonna happen here is it's gonna spiral to the top and then it's gonna come back the other way and spiral back down again. Or you could make it two strings of 50 with one strand per string and you get exactly the same layout, but here you'd be feeding the data in at the bottom for both of the spirals um, on the way up. So if you're building some, you know, tomato cage trees, um, this way of representing them is really cool. Um, the, it's interesting to look at the node layout because in this case, the node layout is just two vertical columns of pixels um, because we said this was two strings um, and in both cases, they're starting at the bottom. Uh, if we go back to the way we had it with one string, uh, 100 pixels and two strands per string, which looks like the same thing and we do the nade layout, you'll notice that here uh, it comes up to 50 and then 51's at the top and it goes back down again. So looking at the node uh, layout here can be a really good idea of getting an understanding of how the underlying data is being represented. So clearly if you were to do a, a morph sweep up the tree, it's gonna zigzag its way up the spirals all the way to the top, um, that sort of thing. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is, you know, if you're doing a, a tree, let's go back and let's let's reset Actually, we'll use the default one over here. Uh, let's make this uh, four strings, uh, 200 and four strands per string, which was that sort of default. Uh, if you wanna set up a controller connection, you can down here. So you can come into here and say, look, that's WS2811 and controller port one on my controller. And if you look in the node layout, it tells you that it's actually gonna try and use four connections on the controller, connections one through four, and that's because you have those four strings. So you would expect that to be the case. So if you would upload that to your Falcon, it would define that tree with 200 nodes on ports one through four, um, and obviously choose the appropriate um, uh, data ranges uh, for that. So I think that's pretty much it. They're the main things. There's obviously things you can do with submodels and faces and everything on the tree, but it doesn't really help you in terms of defining your tree. Just remember, be considerate about where your, your starting point is um, and whether it's gonna go clockwise or anti-clockwise. Most people trip over on the whole strands per string. Think of strings as the number of connections on your controller and strands per string is the number of times, uh, the number of uh, ups and downs each string does before you go on to the next string. Um, and the nodes per string is how long that string of lights is that's connected to a single output on your controller. And as much as possible, try to keep all the strings the same length and you'll find that uh, it's so much easier to define your trees in X lights. So hopefully guys that helps. Cheers.